Hello! My name is Sarah Perez, aka the humble nerd that recalls in her closet, and welcome to the second installment of r slash neckbeard stories on my channel, and we're going into chapter 2 of the Wolfbeard Saga. Now, as aforementioned in the previous video, if you thought the first chapter was weird, just, just brace yourself for chapter 2. Chapter 2 and onward, as we bounce further and further down this rabbit hole that is r slash neckbeards, you're just going to find that these guys are relentless, and Wolfbeard is one of the most relentless, if not the most relentless, and there are some scary stories out there. So just buckle on in, let's grab some cheeky tendies, your Doritas, a Mountain Dew, and let's hop to it. The Wolfbeard Saga, Chapter 2, Wolfbeard Returns, The Wounded Beast. Ow! <laughs> Sorry, that was dumb. Hello again, everyone. First of all, I wanted to thank you for the warm welcome you all gave me on my first entry. I was genuinely amazed how many of you enjoyed the story and wanted to hear more. So, ask and you shall receive. Today's entry is one of drama, suspense, non-reciprocal feelings, and a rejection-fueled temper tantrum of beardy proportions. And with that, let us begin. Since my fate-altering encounter with the mighty werewolf, I had consciously made an effort to try making plans to meet up with Miss Piggy in neutral locations, or whenever Wolfbeard was away. Of course, it wasn't always possible to avoid him. When it came to me being in the general vicinity of his town, he was like a damn truffle pig catching my scent in the wind. He had the most uncanny ability to somehow sense my presence and materialize in said location as if by magic. Miss Piggy and I out to lunch... Oh, wow! What are you two doing here? What a coincidence. Mind if I join you? Miss Piggy invites me to come over to hang out at her apartment while Wolfbeard is supposed to be working until six. Oh, wow! I just so happened to get off work early again, and what are the odds I'd find you over here? Don't mind if I do joining in on the girls' day. Now, mind you, if his work situation were anything otherwise, I genuinely might believe this were a coincidence. However... Wolfbeard quote-unquote worked for his wealthy father, so basically whenever he felt like being done with work for the day, he was done, and he always decided he was done when I was there. I genuinely tried, you guys. I tried so hard to be friendly to this man because he was going to be marrying a childhood friend, but god damn did he make it hard. And there were only so many excuses I could accept for his blatantly creepy and downright inappropriate behavior before I came to the inevitable conclusion that I would never feel comfortable around this person, and that I needed to at least try to warn and protect Miss Piggy from what I could only see as what would become a disaster of a marriage and a broken heart. Now, before anyone gets too far into thinking, Gee, Calamity, he may be feeding Miss Piggy the delusion of him being a literal werewolf, but that's hardly hurting her and doesn't warrant trying to interfere with the future marriage. I get you, fam. If that was it, I'd let them play Princess Mononoke into the sunset. No. What bothered me enough to try to talk this woman out of an engagement was the blatant attempts to cheat on her right before her very eyes. Somewhere along the way, Wolfbeard had decided that he was never really in love with Miss Piggy, I would find this out later from word of his own mouth. But early on, it was apparent that he had decided I would be the new object of his desire, whether I returned the sentiment or not. We're talking about a man that growled at dogs passing in the street and dramatically clutched his heart whenever anyone spoke of nighttime or the moon. He clearly was a true master of subtlety. All sarcasm aside, Wolfbeard blatantly began attempting to quote-unquote put the moves on me about three visits in. Anytime I was over, he'd always go out of his way to get as physically close to me as possible. Like, take as small as you're willing to allow your personal bubble to shrink, and shrink it in about three more inches. Got it? Okay, now imagine the person invading said bubble being significantly larger than you, looming so near you that you can feel their hot, rotten breath on your neck, and catch every whiff of their potent body odor. Their large, moist arms occasionally brush you due to standing so close. And to make sure you're getting an ample dose of their sweat, they squeeze your arm or waist with their large, soggy hand every other word. 
And, most importantly, you can't forget that since they loom over you so, they are in the perfect position to blatantly stare down your shirt at your cleavage at all times they think your eyes are not directly on them. Uncomfortable yet? <sighs> I'm sorry, my brave soldiers, but we've only just begun, and the war has many horrors yet to come. Alongside Wolfbeard's frequent soggy squeezes, he liked to try his hand at sweet-talking. He'd constantly say things like, You'll make some man very happy someday, and I envy the lucky bastard, and goth chicks are the sexiest. But his all-time favorite poetics to fall back on were extremely uncomfortable comments directly regarding my body. He'd scan me up and down with his greedy little pin eyes and say things like, Ooh, girl, your tits look spectacular in that shirt. Or, honey, that top shows up all the right curves. The wildest part to this was that he would make those vulgar comments in the most ridiculously effeminate voice possible while wobbling his head back and forth and snapping his wrists, as if he thought mocking the most over-the-top stereotype of a gay man made it a funny joke that was totally appropriate and A-OK -okay to not only say to my face, but in the presence of his own fiancé. But perhaps the wildest thing of all was that Miss Piggy was not only all right with these behaviors, but actually defended them. That's right. The few times I had alone with her, I blatantly told her how uncomfortable Wolfbeard made me, and that she shouldn't put up with him openly flirting with other women because she was worth more than that. But she'd always counter with, But he's only joking! And, He doesn't mean to come off as creepy, he's just trying to be friendly! Basically, for every concern I raised, she had an excuse prepared and at the ready. So, after going back and forth with Miss Piggy countless times about it, I finally accepted that if she wanted to marry a creep that openly ogled other women and would, without a doubt, cheat on her the very second the opportunity presented itself, she would. As much as I cared about the well-being of Miss Piggy's heart after rekindling her old friendship, I also recognized a lost cause when I saw one and had to accept that it was not my circus, and this was not my sweaty, unkempt monkey. So, my compromise was simple. I would stop bringing it up to Miss Piggy, but I did not want to be around Wolfbeard whenever humanly possible. Despite how she defended him, I fiercely maintained how uncomfortable he made me, and, to my surprise, Piggy actually agreed. So, over the next couple of weeks, when I saw Miss Piggy, she either came over to my place, or we met somewhere outside of her town, and, seemingly, Wolfbeard's sphere of influence. It. Was. Fantastic. The uncomfortable aura of hungry eyes boring into me was gone, so I was truly able to enjoy catching up on lost time with my friend. It was hugely apparent that our interests had become wildly different, but... As we spent the majority of time simply filling each other in on how our lives, families, and towns had changed over the years, this really wasn't a problem. I did start to notice a disturbing theme, however. Of every cringy change or harebrained, ill-advised decision she had made over time since high school had somehow linked back to Wolfbeard's influence in one way or another. That being said, these brief few weeks of reprieve were the calm before the storm. Summer quarter had just rolled around, and since I wasn't taking any classes then, it was my vacation. This meant I went back home to my parents' place that was much closer to Miss Piggy's, and I had a whole lot more free time. Taking advantage of this new spare time, Piggy invited me out to her place for the first time in weeks. I was obviously apprehensive about it, but agreed when she assured me that Wolfbeard would indeed be gone the whole weekend as he was on a camping trip with his father. I was also a bit easier to warm up at this point as well because another friend of mine agreed to come with. And who doesn't love introducing their old and new friends? The more the merrier. My other friend, who I'll call Lilith, her D&D moniker, I guess I'll be sticking with this nickname theme, haha, <laughs> is still one of my best friends to this day. We met after I moved from my old town, and we rode through the absolute wilderness that was our edgy high school emo years together. You get through that kind of shit together and you'll either want to forget the other ever existed or you'll be blood brothers for life. We're both grown-ass adults now who practically live in replicas of the Adams Family home, though, so maybe the phase never entirely left us or it didn't hit as hard. 
like a slow burn that permanently infected us. But I digress. We're a couple of spooky badass bitches that ride or die together. And god damn if Wolfbeard didn't make us ride through hell. So Lilith and I piled into my car and made the trip over to Miss Piggy's. I had already warned her about the filthy state of the place, and you better believe I had told her all about the Wolfbeard nonsense. But rather than be apprehensive, Lilith maintained an incredibly amused air about the whole thing. Lilith is a creature that's mastered all 12 circles of sass, and is an entity I suspect to be composed of nothing but sheer concentrated spite. So I got the impression she was actually disappointed that the beard would not be available for viewing in his natural habitat. However, to her delight, things that evening took a turn from what I was expecting. You see, when I pulled into the parking lot of the oh-so-familiar battle zone of an apartment complex, I spotted not one, but two cars in front of Miss Piggy's unit. There was Miss Piggy's car, and next to it, plain as day, was Wolfbeard's car. A wave of rage burbled up in me, and I froze in my tracks, no longer wanting to participate in the visit. Lilith, however, looked positively ecstatic, and grabbed my arm, yanking me toward the unit. When I finally got to the door, I knocked a little harder than usual, my irritation apparent. However, Miss Piggy didn't seem to pick up on this in the slightest. And when she opened the door to greet us, there, oozing proudly on the couch, was none other than Wolfbeard. Lilith nearly looked like Christmas had come early, hoping upon hope she'd get to see him bark or climb out of another window. I, however, was not in a good mood about the matter. A little curtly, I asked Miss Piggy, I thought Wolfbeard was joining his dad on a camping trip this weekend, Piggy. Oh, well, he was, but when I told him you were coming over today, he decided to stay home instead. The way she said this, as if it was nothing even slightly unusual, practically ran my blood cold. Was I living in the Twilight Zone? Why the hell would Miss Piggy tell Wolfbeard I was coming over when I expressly told her he made me uncomfortable and I didn't want to see him? What's more, why was she okay with him seemingly being so enamored with me that he cancelled out on a trip with his dad he had previously been super excited about? The whole thing just didn't sit right with me. As per usual, the moment I entered the room, Wolfbeard's eyes laser focused directly onto my chest. However, moments later, his gaze shifted to the new figure behind me. Upon spotting Lilith, it was his turn to look like Christmas had come. Hello, my darling calamity, he chirped, picking up that stupid effeminate mock accent again. I must say, you look positively appetizing as usual. The way he said appetizing damn near set the hairs on the back of my neck standing straight up. He shifted into what I imagine he thought to be a seductive position on the sofa and narrowed his eyes at me. But I must say, who's that absolute snack behind you? Lilith shot me a look of pure euphoric amusement at what her eyes were witnessing before stepping forward and introducing herself. Hi, I'm Lilith. I'm Calamity's friend from high school. It's nice to meet you. There was absolutely no subtlety when Wolfbeard's eyes shifted down to Lilith's cleavage. If my tall and slender frame is busty, Lilith's shorter and curvier frame is positively voluptuous to say the least. And oftentimes, her choice of wardrobe only emphasizes this. It was all too much for the poor beard. Sensing a new female in his territory, the mighty Wolfbeard began his usual courting rituals. Prying himself off the sofa like a wad of chewing gum baked in the sun, he waddled to the side to usher Miladies to the now vacant seats. Gallant as he likely saw the act, the clearly defined sweaty ass print left seared into the fabric of the sofa, left us more than a little hesitant to take a seat, so instead we opted to sit in a circle on the living room carpet. To precisely no one's surprise, Wolfbeard hurriedly worked to shove himself between Lilith and I. He sat crisscrossed while leaning back, his arms coming behind and dangerously close to touching Lilith and I. The next hour proceeded to be painfully slow, and filled with an obscene amount of increasingly vulgar, quote-unquote, joke comments by Wolfbeard. It seemed that as much fun as Lilith had initially thought the scenario would be, this beard was far more powerful than she had anticipated. He was a creature of darker magics older magics, and these unholy forces broke through even her seemingly impenetrable war-hardened emotional battle armor, leaving her shifting uncomfortably and looking at me for escape. 
At this, I took my window of opportunity to flee. I told Miss Piggy that Lilith and I had something come up and that we had to go. She seemed a little disappointed by the sudden departure, but accepted and bid us goodbye. However, it was Wolfbeard that really seemed the most upset by this. His shoulders dropped and he looked down to the floor, his dirty golf cap casting a heavy shadow on his round face. You really have to go so soon? He asked in a quavering voice. Yeah, sorry about that, I responded with zero interest in feeding into his act. At this, with great effort, he worked his way back up into a standing position before beginning to waddle in our direction. That's really a shame, he almost whispered. I gave up spending time in the great wilderness to be able to hang out with you, and you should know what a big deal that is to me. My kind need to run wild and free in the forest. It's in our blood. It helps us keep control of the beast. Lilith shot me a look, but he kept approaching us. Well, in the very least, you can give me a hug before you go. Before I could protest, his moist, flabby arms were crushing around me, pinning my arms to my side. I was enveloped in a cloud of body odor that I previously never would have thought possible and had to fight the powerful urge to retch. He squeezed way too hard, as if trying to smash me as close to him as possible before finally releasing me from his bear trap of a grip, and then approaching Lilith with the same expectancy despite her having literally just met him. She, however, wasn't quick enough to evade, and found herself smashed in the same, stinking embrace I had been in just moments before. As soon as she was released, the two of us fled to my car. However, over my shoulder I called for Miss Piggy to join us for just a moment. Quickly, she hurried out around the corner to meet us by my car. Once there, I sort of opened the floodgates on her. I told her that I was really irritated that Wolfbeard was there after she all but promised he wouldn't be, and that I was sick and tired of all the gross comments he constantly made and how he tried to touch me all the time. And I also mentioned how he had been making Lilith uncomfortable as well. I firmly stated that I didn't want to have to be around Wolfbeard again if he couldn't control himself. The scene must have looked intense to any onlookers. We're in the Pacific Northwest, so even though it was the beginning of summertime, it was a gray and cloudy day, and it had begun to pour down heavy rain. However, the drama turned up even more a moment later, when we heard what sounded like a cross between a wounded cry and an attempt to howl like a wolf. I looked out across my window to the corner of the building. Wolfbeard had crept out behind Miss Piggy, and at some point had been listening in on our conversation. Apparently, my declaration of not wanting him near me unless he could refrain from attempting to grope me was far too painful a blow, as he dramatically ran off toward the wooded trail behind the apartment complex. Seeing this, Miss Piggy legitimately stifled a sob and cried out after him for him to come back. But it was no use. The Alpha Beard had fled into the forest beyond, likely already transforming into a powerful beast to brood in the shadows. Seeing Miss Piggy in near hysterics, Lilith and I felt like we had no choice but to take her back inside and try to calm her down. She was rambling and raving about him and his CONDITION! We can't leave him alone out there like that! When he transforms while too upset, he could be reckless and he could get himself caught! It's not safe! She sobbed. After about 15 minutes of consoling a distraught Piggy, her phone rang. To seemingly no one but Miss Piggy's surprise, it was Wolfbeard. She dramatically cooed into the phone at him, asking him where he was and if he was okay. Having trouble hearing him, she switched the phone to speaker mode. What met our ears was the most pathetic-sounding croak I've ever heard in my life. Ugh. Piggy, I need help. My transformation was too quick and emotional, and I lost control. I ran wild and aimless in my pain, and somehow I've gotten myself stuck. I ran into a clay flat, and the rain has made it like a tar pit. I'm stuck, and my transformation weakened me too much to get out. Please help me. I'm growing weaker yet. <laughs> he dramatically finished before hanging up the call. At this, Miss Piggy went nuts again screaming that we needed to call an ambulance or the police to go rescue him. It took ten more minutes to calm her down, 
and she only did that after I called her brother and asked him to check the woods behind the nearby school for Wolfbeard, as the trail from the apartment complex connected there. He agreed, and eventually Miss Piggy calmed down enough that Lilith and I felt it was okay to finally leave. I don't know what happened to Wolfbeard, but I knew it wasn't anything as dramatic as he made it seem, and I didn't want to play into his ploy for attention by being seen as waiting for him upon his return. Though I was not there for his retrieval, Miss Piggy's brother, who despite his wackadoodle sister is actually a pretty normal and nice dude, later called me to retell the harrowing journey. And do oh, what a journey it was. You see, it was raining something awful that day, and it did make the trails terribly mucky. But there was no dangerous tar pit-like clay flat to trap emotionally distressed werewolves. No, when Piggy's brother went to check the trail behind the school, he found Wolfbeard face down in a literal mud puddle, phone in hand dramatically held out as if he gave out to the elements while calling for help. Apparently, he was none too happy to see Miss Piggy's brother there instead of us, and all but made him single-handedly yank his oversized girth out of the puddle himself. To this day, I can't get the mental image out of my head of that grown-ass man plotting out a plan to make those heartless women feel so bad that they'll have to apologize and spend all their extra time with him, stalking through the rain and windswept back trail of a forest, searching for the perfect mud puddle and then carefully nestling himself face down in it, careful to keep his phone clean. The sight must have been spectacular. But I digress. This was just the first of Wolfbeard's spectacular tantrums, and this was before he had even confessed his feelings about Milady. You see, he didn't give up easy, and if beaching himself in a shallow slop puddle wasn't enough to force me to love him, he'd have to try a different approach. But that is another story for another day. I'll catch you all again next time for part three. And so ends chapter two. Ugh, this chapter was so infuriating. Just like... I I don't even know how to express like the frustration and anger I could have felt like with that type of level of betrayal from Miss Piggy. Like... I told you, hey, I feel uncomfortable, and then you still bring around the person that makes me feel uncomfortable. It's just like, wow, wow. And then that grade A level category five tantrum that Wolfbeard throws of like, why won't you love me? It's just, it's pathetic. It's pathetic, like... <sighs> I, I, it's just gross. And the fact that this whole thing gets worse! The fact that this guy gets worse! It's so frustrating. But again, I know how this ends. I know that there's karmic justice at the end of this rainbow. So I'm... Woo! I'm gonna, I'm gonna trick through reading this. <laughs> like, I, again, I know how this ends. I know what happens. But like, I guess as an actor reading through this you kind of like get secondhand anger and cringe while acting through all of this so it's just like ah anger or to quote to quote neckbeards this is infuriating ah <coughs> oh my throat <laughs> sorry but anyway Thank you guys again for joining me for chapter two. I can't wait to read the rest of this to you guys. If you like this video, please proceed to go into a thumb war with a like button. I would greatly appreciate it. If you have any suggestions for future stories, please send them to the humble nerd in the closet at gmail.com. I will gladly read through those and put them in my queue of stories to read next. I also have a Kofi account if you would like to support me. Um, if you look up Sarah Senshi VA on Kofi, you can either donate a couple of dollars just willy nilly, or you can. I have a voiceover commissions up, so I'd be more than happy to hear you out. I work with Silent Jack. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He's a wonderful animator. I voice his character Rachel Rabbit, and uh, am the singing voice for his character Mia Mouse. And I'm also playing Sketchy Ann in his upcoming film Shade. So if you guys would like to go check out his stuff, it's Silent Jack. Go check out his stuff so you can learn more about these wonderful characters. And 
And with that, I'm going to skedaddle on off because it's late and I need to go to sleep and I have a new job. So, yes. <laughs> um, but remember, to be the kind of person that you wish there was more of in the world. And with that, I'll see y'all later. Bye!